Hello again, and welcome to another exciting episode of 7th Grade Social Studies. And we are back on the timeline to independence. This is part four. Um, so we have been talking about the Boston Massacre and the effects of it. It's sort of the aftermath, um, the trial, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Skipping ahead to the next big event also in Boston, which is the Boston Tea Party. As you remember, after the Boston Massacre, in order to try to calm things down a little bit, Parliament repealed the Townsend Acts, all of the taxes and products that were taxed, except for one, the tax on tea. The colonists felt this was still unfair because it was still taxation without representation. And of course, that means representation in the British Parliament. And of course, Parliament is a legislature, which of course is a group that makes laws, of course. And they continued with their protests and boycotts because they were so angry. It was not the fact that they had to pay any tax while the British did it, because as you may already know, if you've listened to me, people in Britain already had to pay taxes. It's the colonists had not paid taxes, but the difference there was that the people in Britain were represented in Parliament while our poor colonists were not. So they had no say, they could not give their consent. So something that is going to happen with all these boycotts is that tea is not going to sell very well. People will refuse to drink it, refuse to buy it. They will replace it with coffee for the most part. And the British East India Company, which was the major seller of tea, and in fact, the only seller allowed to sell tea in the colonies, um, was in danger of going bankrupt. So to bail them out, Parliament passed a law called the Tea Act, which required the colonies to um, pay for any tea that was shipped to them by Britain. So the East India Company could decide, okay, Boston is going to get some shiploads of tea. And this is, in fact, what they did. They sent over three shiploads full of tea, and they expected the people of Boston to buy it. Now, the people of Boston did want, not want their tea, so they refused to buy it. But the colony of Bo or the city or the town of Boston was required to pay for the tea either way. So what's going to end up happening in, in December is 1773 is that the Sons of Liberty are going to disguise themselves as Mohawk Indians and they are going to um, they're going to sneak onto these ships and dump the tea into the harbor, as you can see right here. I just learned a new special effect. And you can notice the crowds of people watching over here and the tea falling into the harbor here and people rowing ashore over there. And it says Americans throwing the cargoes of the tea ships into the river at Boston or Boston, if you prefer. Um, so this is going to greatly upset the British because this is not just a few little bags of tea. This is, in today's dollars, millions of dollars worth of tea. And the British see this as criminal behavior, vandalism, destroying others' property, whereas the colonists see it as a form of protest. They're simply protesting the fact that they are being taxed without representation. Now, you see, they are dressed as what they believed to be uh, Mohawk Indian costumes, although um, they didn't really fool anyone. You can see people knew that this was happening, and this, this is very quickly identified as being the Sons of Liberty behind this. So what's going to happen? Um, we're going to fill in the notes. If you have not already done so here, um, colonists angry about the tax on tea, uh, the Sons of Liberty, they raided the ships, etc. Nothing else was damaged or stolen. Down here, you can write the colonists' reaction. No, no, no. Sorry. The British reaction. The British reaction, which is passing laws called the Intolerable Acts. All right, the Intolerable Acts 
which are also known as the coercive acts. Uh, this is what you could have. So for this, you can pause and write that in. Okay, the intolerable acts. This is a scene from John Adams, the reading of the intolerable acts, a proclamation by the king. And basically, this is going to be a series of laws designed to punish Boston, make an example of Boston so that none of the other colonies would want to be, be on the bad list the way Boston is. So they, some of the highlights or lowlights, depending on your view, um, one thing that's going to happen with these intolerable acts is they're going to shut down local self-government. So most town meetings are outlawed. The, the Massachusetts legislature is outlawed. Um, and basically they are placed under full control of the royal governor and the military. Um, they send over more soldiers and the Quartering Act, once again, raises its head as a new Quartering Act, allowing troops in to be quartered in unoccupied homes and buildings or occupied. They usually did go with the unoccupied ones. The warehouses were what they preferred so as not to cause too much upset colonists, too many upset colonists, yes. All right, um, the oh, wrong way, sorry. So the, to fill in your notes here, the, this is Britain's response to the Tea Party. It is designed to punish and make an example of Boston. It kind of is supposed to scare the other colonies like Pennsylvania, New York, Virginia, etc., etc., to not behave themselves the way that those, those bad people in Boston did. So um, it doesn't work. It backfires. But... Another major part of this law was that no ships could enter or leave Boston Harbor. They closed down the harbor. And you're thinking, wait, Boston's, econ Boston's in New England. With their short growing season in rocky soil, farming's not very profitable. So obviously they had to rely on things like fishing and trade and shipbuilding and whaling and all that good stuff that involved ships. Um, no ships can enter or leave Boston Harbor until all of the dump tea was paid for and the tax on it was paid for. How are they ever going to do with this with their economy completely shut down? It's going to be difficult. Um, this could, many people felt this was the, going to be the death of Boston. Most town meetings and the Massachusetts legislature were outlawed. The colonists reaction here. Well, it's coming up. I'm just going to make you wait for a second. This kind of shows what the colonists react, the other colonies, how they're going to react. This says the Bostonians in distress. And you see hanging from the Liberty Tree is Boston, who are imprisoned here. So this is basically, and you can see all of the soldiers and cannons surrounding Boston, basically putting Boston in jail, or at least in timeout, but in jail. Now, what happens here that's surprising to the British, these represent the other colonies like New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, even as far away as South Carolina and Georgia, they come to the aid. They come to keep Boston alive. They rally behind Boston. So instead of scaring the other colonies away like they intended, this actually brings the other colonies more unite, makes them more united. It brings them together. The other colonies united and tried to help Boston. Ben Franklin's old Albany plan for union, join or die, when before they wanted to not join, now they want to join. They are coming together. All right. Um, moving on, one more reaction I just want to get in here, and I don't want to go too long, but we have been really focused on Boston. Boston has been the center of everything. Now things are going to move down about 300 miles to the southwest um, to Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right here where it says Independence Hall, Philadelphia, PA. Um, this is going to be where a meeting is held now because, as I said, Boston is pretty much in jail. 
all these other colonies, the other colonies all want to help Boston. So they, to figure out what to do, they send representatives, representation, to a kind of a legislature. It's going to be called the Continental Congress, and they're going to meet in Philadelphia. So these were the New York delegates of the what we're going to call the First Continental Congress. Spoiler alert, there will be a Second Continental Congress later. Um, these are the names of them, Philip Livingston, James Duane, John Alfop, Alfop, Alsop, John Jay, and Isaac, or Isaac Lowe. Um, and this is brought to us by the Committee of Correspondence in New York. Remember the groups that wrote letters back and forth spreading the news of the colonies? All right, so they are going to meet in this building um, called Carpenter's Hall, Carpenter's Hall in Philadelphia, located right behind the more famous Independence Hall. Um, and they are going to act like a legislature. It's a group of people to make laws, but they don't have any power to make laws. In fact, this may not really be a legal group gathering at all, but there's lots of people there who represent 12 of the 13 states, no Georgia this time, and they, they're going to decide and discuss, debate what to do. Now, they can't really pass laws, but they can send an angry letter to the king, and that's what they do. They demand that Parliament repeal the Intolerable Acts. Um, we will have to wait and see if they do that. They also urge the colonies to prepare to defend themselves. They, they urge them to form militias. Militias are volunteer citizen soldiers. Um, basically, if you if picture like a volunteer fire department, but with guns instead of with hoses and trucks. So they're these people who train to be ready to fight. Um, now, at this time, there was no army in the colonies other than the British army. So this is kind of creating an army through volunteer soldiers. Um, this is a copy of the angry letter they write to the king. It says, to our king, the most beloved majesty and glorious something. I can't read that exactly. I can read it to you later in school, but it's pretty flattering, angry letter. All right, so that's all we have for today. Um, hopefully you got all of these notes in. If you miss a couple, I'm not too worried about that. And I will see you soon. Um, thank you.